What's the worst example of rich people problems that you've seen? My rich friend has had to respray his car multiple times because a peacock on his lawn keeps seeing his reflection in it and attacks it like crazy. I was pumping gas in a rather dicey neighborhood at a cheap gas station, and this older woman pulls up in her Bentley. She pulls up on the pump ahead of me and cracks her window slightly and asks for me to help. I ask her what she needs. She asks me to pump her gas because she was too scared to do it herself. I ask her what type of gas she wanted, and she said the cheapest. I asked her if she was sure, with such a high-end car, did she really want to put in budget gas. She said it didn't matter since she could easily afford any new car she wanted. So I insert my debit card and she hands me a $100 bill and says keep the change. I fill up her tank and my own 12-gallon Honda Civic tank and I made about $30 from the change. I finish up at the gas station and jump on the freeway to see my girlfriend at the time. And I'm going the same way as this woman. I get off at the same exit as this woman. She's making a right to an affluent area and I'm making a left off the exit to a less nice area. She rolls down the window and yells at me. I thought you were following me. I'm sorry, where are you heading? I told her which neighborhood I was going to and she gave an awkward smile and says, I'll tell the dispatcher that you're not following me and that I'm not fearing for my life. The B word called the cops on me thinking I was following her to rob her. I ended up getting to my destination, chill with my girlfriend and I didn't get pulled over. I work at a hotel and whenever I valet a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, I just think of this old lady. Stuff like this is why if I ever do get to a level of income that could be considered rich, why I won't flaunt it. I wouldn't want to be a paranoid aging dragon of a person clutching my pearls at every turn while simultaneously trying to show off the same pearls. I knew someone who traded in his Porsche and brought a new one every year. His parents were wealthy and died when he was in his teens and left him a multi-million dollar trust fund. What was sad was that he felt like he couldn't pick up women without flashing his cash and expensive sports car, but he would dump them all in a couple of weeks because they were only into me for my money. The loneliest guy I've ever met. And he's not Batman, by the way. His parents died in a car accident and his butler's name is Davin, not Alfred. My wife is a flight attendant. Wife, what would you like to drink? Passenger, I'll have a water. Uh, wait, where is your water from? My wife, uh, what? What country is your water from? I only drink water from France. Well, I knew the topic would be full of stuff that made me angry, and after this batch, I'm already fuming. Oh well, on to more of these fools with more greenbacks than sense. I went to a fine dining restaurant a few years back that offered us a chance to look at their water menu before dinner. My wife immediately said no because obviously we're not ordering fancy water off the water menu. I'm still kind of disappointed that we didn't at least look at it. That would have been hilarious. Complaining about your allowance from your daddy at age 30, which is the rough equivalent of two average salaries. Or complaining that your dad brought you a used car instead of a new one when you were 21, and he only spent 10k. The girl could have been thankful that he even bought her a car. I knew people who brought a new yacht because the wife didn't like the beds on the old one. I knew some who brought a new yacht because the old one had ants and they couldn't find the hive. I mean, this one's a little more understandable. F ants. I would have set the thing on fire. Girl in college lost $6,000 in traveler's checks, but doing the paperwork to have them replaced was too much bother for her. I had friends who had to break their phone. It was the latest iPhone model and perfectly working, but there was a newer one coming out that they wanted and their parents would only buy it if their other one was broken. I had to endure these kids throwing their phones against walls and being frustrated that their phone wasn't broken yet. My friend wants to marry her boyfriend. They're going to school in America, but are both from China, her from Beijing and him from near Shanghai. They both pay $60,000 a year to go to high school here. However, she can't marry him because his family only owns two houses in Hangzhou, whereas hers owns seven in Beijing. (sighs) My rich aunt doesn't let us park in front of her house because it makes her mansion look bad. When I was in high school, my family was pretty poor and I had a fairly rich friend. My single dad spent years saving up for us to go to Disneyland. We finally went when I was 16. Fast forward a year, my friend is going to Disneyland for Halloween break. Her dad told her to invite two friends, so she invited me and another girl. I was freaking stoked. But she kept saying, 
I don't know, it's probably going to be boring. My grandma takes me to Disneyland like every break. And when we got there, all she wanted to do was sit on benches and text. All of the rides were boring, and she had already been on them dozens of times. It ended up being pretty boring for me because I didn't want to go on the rides without her. A young girl, about five years of age, was getting ready to go into New York City to visit her grandmother, New Jersey suburbs. She was at her aunt's house and didn't have a pair of shoes that she liked. She called her chauffeur, told him which pair of shoes she wanted, and the guy got the shoes and drove some 20 miles to deliver them. And she told him he got the wrong ones and he was an idiot. No one in the family thought this was inappropriate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a rich kid becomes a spoiled, entitled brat. Watch The Queen of Versailles. It's riveting and it's all about rich people problems. And it's not about Marie Antoinette, as the title would suggest. It's a documentary about a ridiculously rich family before and during the Great Recession, and the effect that the housing crisis had on them. A person I know only drinks Evian or Voss water because he's allergic to tap water. I'm not ripping on him for not drinking tap, but for only drinking what is regarded as luxury water. He lives in a wealthy neighborhood in America. I just find it crazy that he'll only drink certain kinds of bottled water. My cousin's best friend yelled at her dad and said she hated him because he wouldn't take her to London to buy a dress, even though the exact same dress was available from the exact same store back home. She needed the one from London because they just make things better over there. I know someone who has to buy all the surrounding plots of land to get some privacy. Of all the things on here, this makes the most sense to me. You really can't put a price on privacy. Sure you can. It's the cost of all the land surrounding you. Local billionaire Paul Allen wanted to put a helicopter landing pad on his waterfront compound on Mercer Island several years ago, but the city said no. So Paul Allen had a custom-made helicopter landing pad ship built that motors out 100 yards into the lake beyond the city's jurisdiction whenever Paul wants to take off or land via helicopter. Zoning regulations are for normies, apparently. Well, as petty and obnoxious as that is, I've looked up Mercer Island and at least the result is just one obscenely rich person making other rich people angry. I hope the engineers who designed that custom boat charged him a fortune. A super yacht docked in Italy at High End Marina. Owners wanted the bottled Perrier water for a party they were having in a day or two. They wanted the marina to supply them with a pallet of said water. The marina said it was against policy for them to get a pallet of water to their boat. So these people got a private jet from America to fly in pallet of said water and got it dropped to the boat. The price was about 28,000 US dollars as far as I remember, but even that amount seems a bit low for that. I had to help a girl pay her tuition bill and she was upset because she genuinely thought the process of putting in credit card information was too difficult. Yeah, she took her dad's credit card and paid 20k for the semester like it was buying a stick of gum. I'd put my tuition on my parents' credit card if I could. 40k of purchases would give them a nice pile of points. And I'd obviously transfer them the money to pay it off. Drove a client's wife home from the airport after the big snowstorm in Boston this year. I felt so bad as she told me, Oh, Roger is so sad. They could only clear the snow from in front of two of our garage bays. He wanted to take his BMW out, but he's stuck driving my Mercedes for another week. Oh, well, how does he go on? I went on an amazing trip to the southern US with my girlfriend at the time during the summer, and she had an uncle who was very rich, and she was used to all his wealth. I wasn't. I couldn't believe that we got to do all of these amazing things that we did. Money was just not an object or something you had to worry about. The third day of the trip, I was getting aboard his yacht, he owned the largest one in the club, and it was incredible. Glass stairs, stone walls, and dark, beautiful wood. We all sat down near the back at a table and his wife freaked out. She yelled, Where are the mats? Apparently, there were supposed to be mats set down on the table before the giant glass bowl of chips and freshly made guacamole could be placed in front of us. She was really mad and almost embarrassed. I've never been so weirded out by someone's anger. I couldn't believe it was such a problem to her. I said to myself, it's fine. Seriously, I could walk in there and grab them in four seconds. I'll never forget, and I learned that extremely rich people don't have the same kind of problems that regular people do. I was once friends with a Chinese girl whose family net worth appeared to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. 
She told me a story about her rich uncle who owned a super yacht and loved to travel around the world. Apparently, his favorite thing to do was pull up into a port and bathe in the stares of everyone admiring his yacht, since it was always the biggest one. Well, one day he goes somewhere, say the Bahamas, and he pulls into the port, and he isn't getting the usual attention, since someone else happens to have a bigger yacht than him for once. This girl said it ruined his whole weekend. He was in a terrible mood and couldn't enjoy anything. I was speechless. Also, this girl is the same one that is constantly complaining about how all her friends aren't that smart or nice, and how she doesn't know what to do with all her free time and money. The girl taught me something. Apparently, there are a lot of rich people that have so little problems, they just make them up. And yeah, I've seen her Facebook pictures, met her friends, seen her cars, and talked to her for long enough to confirm that she probably isn't lying. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I had a former friend who went into despair because Hurricane Sandy flooded her living room of her childhood home, told everyone she was homeless now, and she knew what it felt like to lose everything the way her Jewish ancestors did in World War II. Thing is, she owned another apartment that she lived in on the island. Her parents owned several more vacation homes up and down the coast. They were a little inconvenienced, maybe, but far from homeless. I worked for a girl who had a speaker go out in her Ferrari, and she refused to drive any further under these circumstances, so she pulled over to wait for one of her house staff to bring her Porsche. True story. I was invited to a graduation party hosted by a very wealthy couple whose daughter had just graduated from Yale. Her father came out in front of the guests, displaying his Rolex and Cartier watches, asking which one of the two expensive watches the group thought would be the more appropriate for the occasion. Everyone just looked at each other silently, not quite sure what to say. Back when the recession hit, one of my very best friend's family was very distraught because they had to sell one of their three private jets. I occasionally hung out with a kid whose dad was super rich. He would just ask for money and get it. He tried to use an ATM and had no idea how to, so he asked me or someone else to get the money for him. It was so confusing for him, most simple tasks were because he was raised to not lift a finger. I knew a guy who had a friend or roommate like that. He recognized the opportunity and had kind of turned himself into an informal personal assistant. He took care of all the details of making things happen for his rich kid friend, while skimming a reasonable living for himself. The way he described it, it didn't sound like he was doing anything unethical. He was just maximizing his friend's enjoyment of spending his allowance, part of the cost of which was paying for his time managing the details of setting up parties, trip planning, researching products, and other things. Honestly, back in the day I'd kind of thought about whether I would enjoy being a butler type figure for someone rich. I can see the charm in the lifestyle, I enjoy looking after people and cooking and being useful, but then I realized that the kind of client or duties you end up with would really be such a roll of the dice, with some potentially unpleasant results in terms of people and workload. I worked for a non-profit that helped extremely low-income women start their own business. These women would give up food to scrape together enough money to join our program. One of our EDs said she wished she could relate to the clients more, but she's never been poor. She owned two homes in one of the most expensive zip codes in the US. Also, another woman, who I really did respect but I didn't always agree with, believed people chose to be in poverty. We would debate for days about that statement. I realized working there that people who run advocacy programs for poverty have no idea what it's really like to be in it. This is a problem because policy and lawmakers are looking at these institutions for advisement on drafting new social safety nets and welfare programs to help the working poor, and they just have no clue. It motivated me to go back and get a master's degree to fight this. I grew up super poor and can speak from experience, not theory. My boss complained to me recently that they owned too much land and too many properties. She's like, don't own too much land and properties, it's just a hassle. A kid I know claimed he wasn't rich, saying, I don't get to pilot my helicopters as much anymore. The guy sitting next to him, when prompted to define an income bracket for middle class, couldn't answer. He eventually arrived at a $700,000 annual income as a rough estimate. I live in the part of my country where internet is really expensive. 16 megabit per second plans are considered plans for extremely rich people. One fine day, one of my friends threw a fit at his dad because he was getting 15 megabits per second instead of 16 for like an hour. 
I mean, holy crap, I live on a 2 megabit per second connection, which turns into 512 kilobits per second connection after a 30 gigabyte data cap. I just moved to a 50 megabit per second from a 2 megabit per second. Life is not the same anymore. I saw a guy on Instagram who couldn't wait for a car he custom ordered, so he went and bought one from the dealer while he waited for the custom one. My old boss did this. He ordered a brand new BMW M5, and while he was waiting for it to be delivered, he brought a nearly new Maserati Quattroporte. When the BMW arrived, he had no more need for the Maserati, so he sold it, and bought a Bentley Flying Spur with the money. This is the same guy who brought a Ferrari 575 Super America and drives it around like it's an everyday car. I don't know if this is a problem exactly, but I was on the tube in South London and a bunch of young banker types in fancy suits were there with their equally well-dressed arm candy girlfriends. And one guy was like, everyone keeps telling me to get a Bentley, but I'm more of a Lambo man. This was at a point in my life where I was living off one dollar boxes of pasta from Tesco, so it was a bit of a surreal moment. Oh man, I work at a place where I interact with a lot of rich people. I've come into contact with lots of rich people problems. Here's a few that I've witnessed. I overheard some ladies saying, Oh, they can be expensive, but buying nicer cars like Porsches and Mercedes is worth it. We had a GMC once, and we only drove it for like four years, and we had to have something fixed, and it just felt old. Also, a mum saying, I took her to a little friend's birthday party, but I didn't know what to bring. Do kids like coach bags still? I have no idea. Some other ladies, so what are you ladies doing this summer? Oh, nothing. Last summer was crazy, so this summer we're taking it easy. We're spending one week in London and one week in Hawaii. But other than that, nothing. We're relaxing this summer. And finally, a 14-year-old kid who looked despondent, and when I asked him what was wrong, he replied, ah, We're going to Paris again. I hate it. It's so boring. There are many more, but those are a few. My London friend is having a baby and she's upset that Jimmy Choo doesn't make diaper bags. My mum works at a Baptist church. The pastor makes somewhere between 90 to 100k a year with all of his insurance and gas paid. He is rich as heck, owns two homes and has a ton of money on top of his salary. When he takes mission trips and pastor conventions, he holds offerings to pay for his airfare and everything else. Meanwhile, other people that come with him pay their own way. This is a church full of poor and retired people. Well, I'd say that's something you don't hear about all the time, but I'm pretty sure that half the ministers of the megachurches in America are obscenely wealthy and see no fault in wringing out every last cent from their congregation on a regular basis. My buddy had to rent a cabin for his ski trip because his mum just had theirs redecorated for a magazine spread, which hadn't been photographed yet. The same guy couldn't remember which company card he'd put his $4,000 adult nightclub tab on. He really needs an assistant to help keep track of these things. He's interviewed some, but he hasn't hired one yet. Last week was rough. To all those who say they'd want to be his assistant, unless you're a masochist, no, you wouldn't. For every time you'd get to go to that club with the bunch of absolute D-bags he's entertaining, you will have picked his kid up from preschool about 20 times, or double-checked a few reams of paperwork, or stayed on the phone trying to get a hold of some bureaucrat or another, or any of a few other dozen boring tasks that you'll probably have to do three at a time. And on top of that, you'd have to deal with King Butthole as your boss. No, not my friend. Inexplicably, he's turned out to be a really good person. No, your real boss would be his dad, who tends to treat everyone that doesn't have at least his net worth worse than garbage, especially his employees. You'd get blamed for every little problem until you're losing your crap and quit, and they'll just pick the next ambitious MBA they could find to take your place. I seriously wouldn't wish that job on my worst enemy. You might think you're tough-minded and could handle it, but you'd be the type that gets broken the hardest. And it would be harder than it should be, because my friend is such a nice guy, and you'd know that if it weren't for you, he'd bear the brunt of it, and those times that are good are really, really good. I'm a nanny for a rich family. A few examples I have. When I get paid, in cash, my boss says, Oh dear, now I'm going to have to go all the way to the bank to get more cash. Not wanting to go to the bank isn't the annoying rich thing. It was an annoying rich thing because she had $500 still in her wallet, and it was annoying that she was complaining it wasn't enough money to have in her wallet. When they travel, they prefer two-bedroom suites. One time, they could only get one bedroom, and they said, Well, this just ruins the whole trip. My car got broken into, and I mentioned it felt so awful to drive it knowing someone had been in it. His idea of emphasizing, 
Oh, that happened to me. I had to buy a new one. The movie This Is 40. Honey, we're in debt and both our businesses are operating at a loss. Okay, let's go spend the night at a nearby luxury hotel and order room service. I was at a marina in the Bahamas to do laundry, stock up on water and supplies with my 25-year-old beta sailsboat, and I was walking the dog when I met a guy walking his dog. He was off a 140-foot boat with a substantial, crisply uniformed crew and could not stop complaining how the Bahamas government had charged him $250 for a six-month cruising permit and fishing license. The same rate I paid, by the way. He went on and on. How they don't have lighthouses or buoys, etc. He had to be paying that much to dock for the night, let alone crew and fuel. Boat probably cost $10 million or more. I ended the conversation by saying that I'd paid more than that for the bottom paint which kept barnacles from growing on my hull. A friend of mine who has considerably more money than me, although admittedly that doesn't take much, was always asking me to come on expensive trips with her, and I had to keep turning her down because I couldn't afford it. She'd say stuff like, oh, go on, treat yourself, and I'd have to explain that I literally don't have the money. It's not that I can't or don't want to spend it. It doesn't exist in my bank account. I eventually had to sit her down and explain that I'm poor. I told her about how I couldn't afford to buy much food, so during work days, I'd live off the fruit tree and coffee at the office. I showed her how all of my shoes have holes, so I'd line them with plastic bags to stop the rain getting in. I explained that I cut my own hair and washed my own clothes in water with no detergent. I pointed out that I'd long ago put all of my possessions that had any sort of value on eBay. I wasn't trying to get sympathy, I was only trying to explain why for the hundredth time I was turning down her invitation for shopping trips or girls' nights or weekends away. She looked at me and nodded in understanding. Ah, I know what you mean. Things have been really tight for me recently. I'm so skint at the moment that I've had to cut my weekly manicure and spa days down to just two a month. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.